Hello and welcome to the fifth episode of STEM for Girls by Girls in STEM. I'm your host, Serena Berry, and this show is entitled The Global Girl Reach Out to the World. This episode is all about outreach. So what is outreach? Outreach is an activity of providing educational services to countries who might not already have them. There are two forms of outreach. There is local outreach, which happens at the local level where we reach out to our local communities and towns. There's also global outreach where we reach out to different countries all around the world. As a member of Storm Gears, I have participated in both local and global outreach. At the local level, I have gone to the Massachusetts Statewide Fair at Regis College, and I have also participated in the Girls in STEM event at UMass Lowell with the help of Team Perseverance, which is another FRC team. At these events, we did fun activities like creating jewelry out of spare robot parts, and we also conducted a robot demonstration. One of my favorite memories at this event was the robot demonstration that we conducted. We were able to turn it into a game and get a lot of the girls involved to see how many balls we could catch using our robot. And it ended up being a lot harder than we thought it was, and we ended up dropping a lot of the balls, but it was still a really fun way to get all of the girls involved and show our robot off at the same time. At the Massachusetts Statewide Fair, I was able to talk with a lot of girls and talk to them about joining their robotics teams. And one girl even joined our own FRC Storm Gears team. I was really proud of this because I was thankful to have helped someone else develop a passion for STEM. Globally, our team Storm Gears has done a lot by sending supplies as well as conducting robotics workshops in countries like India, Rwanda, Ghana, Kenya, and Argentina. Our first outreach event happened in 2015 when me and my brother went to three schools in India and conducted a robotics workshop. These three schools consisted of about a thousand kids, but we were able to meet with 50 of them and their teachers to conduct a robotics workshop. At this workshop, we packed our own FLL in a box, which was our team's product of bringing first to underprivileged countries. In this box, we had school supplies and fun activities and challenges that we could do with the kids. These challenges included building towers out of spaghetti and marshmallows and also making snap circuits. We also talked about real world problems like recycling and how the kids could implement different recycling techniques within their own communities. This outreach event was really fun for me because I was able to see the joy on the kids' faces as they thought in a new way and competed with each other to build the tallest towers. Our legacy of outreach continues with the FRC team as we have gone to more countries like Argentina, Rwanda, Hong Kong, Ghana, and Kenya, and we have sent them supplies and conducted workshops. In Hong Kong, we met with an all-girls team there and pr created a um, program on how to teach them coding and make robots. Um, in Rwanda, we our team sent one member and a mentor, and we created a SOLIDWORKS 3D design workshop, as well as sent them the same fun outreach games that we did in India. In Kenya, we sent a school of about 90 girls and 90 boys who come from underrepresented and underprivileged areas, um, who are also come from orphanages, and we gave them bristle brought kits, and um, we also gave them a laptop and different Legos so that they could help learn about STEM. And in Ghana, we went to a primary school and gave them um, the same Lego development kits so that they could start their own teams. Our FRC team also continues outreach by creating different products. So we have the FLL in a box and also recycled robot parts, which we have created for a robot kit. And finally, our Steam Splash webpage, which we use to um, bring FLL and STEM and FIRST to countries all around the world. Outreach is a very important part of robotics because we are able to bring STEM and new ideas to teams and countries who may not have had these resources before. Outreach is also a great way to get girls involved in STEM because you're able to talk directly to them and show them the wonders of joining a robotics team. Through Outreach, I have been able to network with many kids and gain their interest in robotics, creating a network of future STEM leaders. We might not share the same culture or language, but we do share the same passion for STEM. So today I'm joined with Hasmin, who is a member of the robotics team that I was on in high school, Storm Gears FRC 5422, and she conducted outreach in Argentina. 
So hello, Hasmin. Thank you for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. So what did you do in Argentina? So my experience in Argentina is pretty complicated. It really started when I was still in FLL myself. So we, as a family, like my family, were from Argentina. And our whole, our whole goal when I was in FLL was to get an FLL team started in Argentina because there wasn't one there yet. And South America is really not popular for FLL teams in general. So it was kind of a big goal that we weren't sure we were going to be able to do. Um, so a couple years ago, Rockwell, which is the company where my dad works, um, started to really like follow the steps to start an FLL team in Argentina. And two years ago, it really like became a reality. And one school in Argentina, it's a public school, which don't tend, which it's a public school, which don't tend to be the best schools to go to. Um, they started an FLL team there called Flecha Cosmica. And it was a crazy experience for them. They did really well in their competition. They had a, they went to the very first competition in Argentina and they actually won the entire thing. They were champions and they qualified for the Houston World Champs. So considering it was their first year and they were one of the first major teams in Argentina, that is a really big deal. So they went to Houston Champs and we talked to them throughout their whole process. We helped them figure out like coordination and we helped them fundraise to get to Houston. And then we also like followed them through social media and everything and tried to keep track of what they were doing and stuff so that we could kind of talk about it when they were done. Then later this summer, my family went down to Argentina. So we said, obviously we have to go visit them and talk to them. So we went to their school one day and we had a really great conversation with a bunch of the kids on the team and a few of their coaches. The coaches are teachers at the school and all the students are students at the school. And because it's a public school, it doesn't have that many resources. So we were really surprised to see like how different the school was compared to the schools that you see here in the US. And we had a great conversation. We brought them a whole bunch of stuff that um, Storm Gears helped to get for them, like snap circuits and a whole bunch of cool techie things. And we had a great conversation. We got to talk about their experience at Worlds and all the types of things that they learned. So what were the lives like for these students in Argentina? So you would think that it would be really, really different considering it's like a whole different continent, a whole different country. But in reality, like their lives are pretty similar to ours here in the US. Of course, they don't have as many resources and everything as much as we do. Their public schools aren't as great as a lot of the schools in the US. But they really have the same ideas as kids that want to learn STEM in the US. Like they just want to be able to learn, have awesome experiences, learn to build cool robots, and get to do things like the Houston World Champs. Like that's super cool. Um, that's really cool that you could stay connected with them through STEM, through social media. Um, what was the most valuable thing you learned through this whole experience? I think the main thing that I learned, I would say, is that STEM is for everyone. Like, there's not a reason that someone shouldn't be able to learn how to do science, technology, how to build robots and math. Everyone should be able to do it. It's just a matter of getting the resources to them and helping them through the process. Uh, what did you enjoy most about this experience? I thought it was super cool to kind of see like a dream that I had when I was younger kind of become a reality. And since then, there's also been so many more teams created in South America. There was finally more competitions in South America and Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, and all that sort of thing. And we've gotten so many teams contacting us and just trying to like, find out more because they're interested and they want to do this and they want to do well. And I just think that's really amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you have any funny stories or games that you played with the kids when you went there? I would say that the funniest thing that happened to us was the very first competition they went to. It was the one that they would qualify to Worlds with. We, I was in the car with my family and I was watching the live stream of the awards ceremony. And because you're in a car, like the service is spotty, right? And we were driving down and I was watching, they're like, and the champion is, and the whole thing just cut out. 
and then for like five whole minutes we were trying to get it to work because we wanted to see because they hadn't won any other awards and that's usually an indicator mm -hmm. of being champion. So we were sitting there for five minutes trying to get it to work and when it finally worked we saw them all on stage with their trophy, everyone was crying and it was just a really funny but also really great experience. Mm -hmm. What was it like interacting with these kids who are from different backgrounds and part of a different culture? Yeah, like I said before, it really wasn't that different. Like, they just want to learn STEM just like we do here. It was a great conversation to see, like, how they were able to use the limited resources they had to become a world-level team. And hearing about their difficulty even trying to get to Houston, like, at first they only had enough money to really send two kids and a coach to Houston. And by the end of it, with all their fundraising and everything, they were able to send the whole team. So it was really great to see how they were able to take their limited resources and really make something great out of it. And how old were these kids? So because FLL is most popular in the US and not as popular other places, the ages, you can go, like you can be in FLL a little bit older. Mm -hmm. So in the US, it's from nine to 14 years old and anywhere else it's 9 to 16 years old. So a lot of these kids were in that older range where they were like 14 to 16 years old, mm -hmm. which is a lot older than you would tend to see here in the US. Mm -hmm. um, how did doing this outreach make you feel? It's just a great experience. Mm -hmm. It's a great feeling to know that you're helping a team that doesn't have the opportunities that you do. And it's just great to see these kids' dreams like coming true. Like Because they went to Worlds, they made a whole bunch of connections. They can use that experience for the rest of their lives when they get jobs and everything. The whole idea of even like going to the US isn't usually something that they can do. So being able to do that and go to the world champs and bring the robot and just spend time with their friends and other kids from other countries is really, mm -hmm. yeah, great. So you accomplished your first goal of helping create an FLL team. Yeah. Do you have any more future goals or plans for outreach? Well, you know, the goal is always to just do more, right? So my team, the Storm Gears, our whole thing is we do a lot of global outreach. So I would say we're close to this goal. My goal would be to get one team in at least every continent and do something like tangible with those teams mm -hmm. and really connect, which we're close. I think we have North America, South America, Europe, Asia, and we have Africa, so mm -hmm. we're kind of leaning for that Australia, mm -hmm. and I, we can't do Antarctica really, mm -hmm. but that would be the next goal. Mm -hmm. That's a great goal. And you said that you helped, your, helped the team in Argentina through mm -hmm. social media. How has social media helped with outreach? Social media just makes it easy, you know? Like, it's not always possible to fly to a completely different country mm -hmm. and bring a whole bunch of materials and resources and help them when they're in a whole nother country. But with the use of social media, we're really able to just pass on resources or talk to them through video live without having to spend ridiculous amounts of money or ridiculous amounts of time. Like you can really help with just like a click of a button. Mm -hmm. Yeah, social media definitely helps make the big world mm -hmm. seem a lot smaller. So thank you, Hasmeen, for being here. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed this. So today I'm joined with FLL team Pajama Llamas. They're having a great season so far. They're the Massachusetts West state champions. And later in this year, they'll be going to Detroit to compete. Um, so thank you all for being here. Um, let's introduce them, starting with Maida. Hi, I'm Maida. Hi, I'm Amita. Hi, I'm Lara. Hi, I'm Ananya. Hi, I'm Hamsika. And they've done outreach in Turkey. So what was your outreach experience like? What did you do? So we, ha we have an Instagram platform, and on that, um, the majority of our followers actually come from Turkey, which is really cool. So um, that's really fun. But we, are, we also do have followers from almost, I think, yeah, every continent. Every continent have. except for Antarctica. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So I think we're doing a lot of global outreach like all over the world. And so how do you maintain your social media platform? Well, um, <laughs> we, have a few, we, have some, uh, we have some help with it. Um, um, Hasmin helps us with it. Um, she, she does a lot of the work with um, answering um, messages from other teams. Um, and we, our job is just to like make funny faces. 
<laughs> um, as for stuff that we share, uh, we share um, videos of a robot, especially this year. Um, we've sh um, filmed videos of our robot doing different uh, missions in really cool ways, and we hope that when people see that, they can um, implement something from what we've what we've done. So that's something that we've done this year. That's really cool. We also make sure to add um, fun photos of us when we're also in competitions. Yeah. We have some pictures of us, our mascot, too. <laughs> so how do you use your social media to help outreach with these countries? So we're actually thinking of starting to, uh, with our YouTube channel that we have, we're going to post um, tutorials for how to build a basic robot or how to program certain things. So that's going to be pretty useful if you're a team who's just starting out and you don't know what you're going to do. So, What have you taught different teams through outreach? So we've actually had a lot of messages about people asking us and other teams asking us about our project and how um, you know, they would like to, uh, like how they would ask us about our project and how um, we came up with our idea because our idea this year is a very, it's very um, interesting, it's very complicated and it's very new. Um, so basically, we've created a we've created an idea about a fabric called Sorbere using um, the scales on a specific moth's wing called the Emperor Moth. So those scales absorb ultrasounds sent out by their predators, which are bats. So using that um, idea, we use bio, bio, biomimicry, and we've created a fabric. So a lot of teams have come out asking us about um, how we've created our project and what our ideas were and how. Um, maybe they could, that how maybe we could help them on something that's completely new. We also learn from a lot of teams about their projects and their robots. Um, we've had a lot of video conferences with other teams talking about how um, we could improve using their tips and ideas. Um, so how does your project help solve world problems going on right now? Um, our project is noise pollution. So. Normally people don't really realize that noise pollution is like that big of a deal because it's not visual and humans are really visual people. And so our our project aims to like bring that out of the dark, help people like realize that it's a really actually a big issue and it can cause serious health effects and things even beyond that. So um, you video conference with a lot of teams. Do you have any funny stories um, or any stories of meeting them? So on our Instagram platform, we have like a lot of different teams following us from all over the world. And one time we posted us eating some donuts at one of our competitions and this team from Australia named the Donut Eating Llamas, uh, they commented and shared a picture with us of them in pajamas, which is kind of fun <laughs> and funny. How do you stay connected with the teams that you talk with or meet with? So we either video conference the teams that uh, we are in contact with. So we've actually received a ton of messages asking to um, contact with us and talk with us. And also, we continue using Instagram to message people so that we can um, continue to talk about our robot and our project and core values and things that we um, really like to do. And along with video conferences, we also will email people to stay in touch and share tips, ideas, and experiences with them so we can share what we know with them and what they know with us. Do you have any future goals or plans for outreach? So we're going to start talking with the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Lowell. Uh, we're going to help some teams, uh, junior FLL teams, um, start off and begin. Mm -hmm. And we'd also like to continue with our, gro our global outreach because that's very important, especially for um, teams and um, students that don't have the same opportunities that we have. So it's very important that we can help them in any way because one day they could do something great that could change the world. Are there any countries that you're looking to create new teams in or reach out to? Any countries. We're just trying to help as many teams as we can. So any country we're open to. Mm -hmm. um, why is it important to outreach with others? We believe that outreach <coughs> we believe that outreach is really important because it helps us share what we know, it helps um, other teams share what they know with us. And really it's really enlightening experience to be able to learn about what different teams do. And we love to also share our love for first and our knowledge with them. 
And like I said before, it's kind of how all these kids, they don't have the same opportunities that we have, especially um, we're very privileged, you know, having a life in the United States. But countries around the world that like, um, for example, Argentina, um, those students don't have the same opportunities that we have. They don't have the same resources. So it's really important that we can pitch in and help them in any way that we can. And you guys are an all-girls team, so yeah. mm -hmm. how have you helped outreach to more girls to join STEM? At our competitions, we always try to find the girls that are on robotics teams and take pictures with other all-girls teams. We have these stickers that we hand out that are, like, say, girls in STEM, STEMinist, and all those, like, fun things. Mm -hmm. And we hand out the stickers to girls in STEM at yeah. our competitions. Mm -hmm. Um, why is it important to have girls involved in STEM? I think there's a very obvious gender gap between um, women and men in the actual STEM field. So it's really important to decrease that and bring more women into the actual field. And how would you do that through outreach? Well, um, <laughs> well, we would um, try and bond with girls in STEM, like talk to girls on robotics teams at competitions. And overall, just try to encourage them and like, yeah. This At one of our competitions, we actually had a team come up to us that was all girls and say, like, we continued this year because we were inspired by you. So that was really fantastic mm -hmm. to hear. And I think another important part of doing this is also giving um, um, other all girls team resources, um, that the resources that they need to actually improve um, their team. And our goal is to show other girls what they're capable of and how that, how they can change the world. And that's really, really important because girls are unaware that they're capable of something that's, that's really big. And how does outreaching to these teams make you feel? It makes us feel really happy because it's just so fun and so amazing to be able to like talk to these teams, share experiences, share funny moments, share ideas and it's just really fun. And social media has made it so much easier mm -hmm. to be able to contact other teams. Uh, like I said before that um, not everybody can travel in a plane and get to another country to share things. But online you have a lot more resources and you can talk with lots of different teams really easily and video conference. I mean of course there's going to be like technical difficulties but it's still a lot easier than it was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I think that feeling that you, you may have inspired somebody that could do a really great um, thing for the world, I think it makes you feel really, really accomplished and like you did something great. So thank you Pajama Llamas for being here and stay tuned for our next show about coding. <laughs>